More than two-thirds of our planet is covered with water. The remaining part consists of continents and islands. Oceans cover the most significant stretch of water bodies and are a hub of diverse life forms. Most importantly, though, over 80% of the ocean remains unexplored. The Mariana Trench is considered the deepest part of the ocean, having an estimated depth of about 36,000 feet at its deepest point. It consists of one of the most intricate and diverse ecosystems ever known to humanity. Today, we'll take you on a scary adventure with super terrifying creatures in the Mariana Trench that you might not have heard of before. Researchers witnessed something extraordinary when they put blue LED lights into the green-eyed squid's eyes. The squid has two eyes, one of which is standard size, while the other is enormous and green. Take a look. A fluorescent pigment that absorbs blue light is present. Their unusual eye structure may help hunters by revealing hidden targets. It belongs to the cockeyed squid family because one of its eyes is substantially smaller than the other. Scientists believe the tiny eye developed for monitoring the ocean floor for predators. On the other hand, the larger eye is directed upward. It is sensitive to the movement of shadows cast by possible prey against the meager light above it. Blue light is absorbed by the fluorescent pigment in the lens of the bigger eye. It can see in common light conditions and brilliant sunlight, thanks to its asymmetrical eyes. The squid's position also facilitates its ability to look in every direction at once. The green-eyed squid lives in the Atlantic Ocean's tropical and subtropical regions. Unique to this sea squirt is its ability to hunt its prey. While most tunicates get their nutrition via filter feeding, the predatory tunicate sits and waits for delicious microorganisms to swim over. Its massive mouth is set on a stalk that extends into the ocean floor. Its mouth closes as the random critters scurry inside, like one of those old-fashioned traps with a box and a string. As soon as they finish swallowing their meal, they reposition the trap. The tunicate's predatory technique allows it to capture and consume tiny prey that may be swimming just above the ocean floor. A tiny crustacean is crucial to their survival, despite its seeming insignificance to us. Despite its seeming simplicity, this hermaphroditic predatory tunicate is thought by experts to be related to humans through the family Film Chordata. In addition to being slimy, acorn worms leave behind sinusy goo tracks on the ocean floor. An acorn worm of unknown species was excavated from around three and a half miles below the ocean surface in 1873. Its discovery by the crew of the E.V. Nautilus was a major scientific breakthrough. The worm was not seen again for another 140 years. The group to which acorn worms belong is unique. Due to its fragility and susceptibility to disintegration after dredging, it has not been noticed for quite some time. It is best to use a submersible to retrieve the creatures since this will provide the most significant degree of care. But in contrast to that, they were retrieved from the ocean floor. The acorn worm does not exhibit musculature and strength required by shallow water worms, which are often found digging holes and sucking food particles from the sea floor. A newly discovered species of acorn worm lives on the ocean floor, where it feeds on detritus. Gran Rojo, or Big Red Jelly, appears like a red spaceship drifting through the water. This new jelly features a three-foot wide bell. This fantastic feature is between 2,000 and 4,800 feet deep. Deep diving ROV cameras captured this event. Gran Rojo was discovered in 1993. Instead of tentacles, it possesses four to seven fleshy arms. It's emotionless, boneless, and eyeless. It's 95% water. It migrates swiftly to hunt prey. The Sea of Cortez, Monterey Bay, Hawaii, Japan, and the Mariana Trench are its habitats. Florida scientists filmed a 10 to 12 foot juvenile squid in the Gulf of Mexico. It is the first giant squid documented in US waters. Our understanding of the squid comes from a few deep-sea specimens and beaks recovered in sperm whale bellies, its major predator. These squids may grow to 45 feet long. First seen in 1925, few specimens were retrieved. The Medusa camera system was employed to explore the deep sea since red lights are not visible to creatures and are quiet. In the ocean's midnight zone, predators patrol the shallows, preparing to attack victims. Green bomber worms were found in 2009. It lives at 8,900 foot depths in the Mariana Trench. When danger approaches, it drops balloon-like structures or fluid-filled bags to distract predators. This segmented worm swims backward after unleashing explosives, say researchers. Body component release isn't uncommon. Green bomber worm balloon bombs are composed of modified gills and light when discharged. The Mariana snailfish, which seems like a ghost from the ocean depths, is the deepest fish we've ever caught. They are consistently subjected to high water pressure in their homes. Like Mariana, certain species of snailfish are confined to specific parts of the ocean. 
Its intense home isn't the only thing that sets this species apart from others. Its physiology and anatomy are also entirely novel. Scientists have seen a headless chicken, no doubt. This pinkish red creature resembles a plump, basted chicken without a head. Internet users call this the headless chicken monster, but it is in fact a swimming sea cucumber. The fins help it swim away from predators. They're two to eight inches long and might be reddish brown to crimson. Juveniles are pale pink. Sea cucumbers share the ocean floor. This headless chicken monster eats floating cucumbers. Divers in eastern Antarctica spotted this unknown sea cucumber at a depth of 9,800 feet. The globe over, people weave a variety of basket styles. Most live in the ocean's depths and grow to a maximum length of two feet when fully extended. The core body disc of a basket star is surrounded by five arms. The outward extension of each limb produces a tangled web-like pattern. These tendrils have a fantastic range of motion. In a similar fashion to other echinoderms, the arms of basket stars are coated in leathery skin. Due to their absence of blood, basket stars must rely on their water vascular system to transport gas. They spend the day lurking in cracks and crevices and emerge to forage for food at night. They sit on a ledge and stretch their arms out like a mesh net shape, perpendicular to the flow of the water. Animals of a lesser size that swim within the reach of their gigantic twisted arms are fair game for these predators. Tiny sharp hooks at the end of each component allow it to ensnare its prey with ease. Many kinds of fish reside in the deep, warm waters of the world's seas. Their hatchet shape inspired their name. Some fish's eyes are tilted so they can survey the sky. They absorb as much light as possible, making it easier for them to see in the dark. Because of bioluminescent photoforms in their undersides, the fish are invisible at night. Light-emitting organs in their body and scales let them conceal in the dark. Because they can regulate their belly illumination, they may blend in with backdrop lighting from above. Scientists believe that the frilled shark is a direct descendant of a type of shark that lived around 99 million years ago. That's why everyone calls it a living fossil. It belongs to a group of the oldest sharks on Earth. It's reminiscent of a lizard with a rounder head and a ruffled neck. Its gills are to blame for its popular name. It has two pairs of gills, the first of which runs across its throat. The margins of both sets of gills are fringed with red. Since shark bones are comprised of cartilage and don't fossilize well, scientists must rely on the shark's calcified teeth to piece together their evolutionary history. The frilled shark has 300 trident-shaped teeth that point backward, grouped in 25 rows. Prey up to half its body length can be swallowed whole by it. The black sea devil, or anglerfish, has a gaping mouth with sharp and needle-like teeth a bit of a startled expression, and a lure atop its head that lights up and is used to attract prey. The anglerfish is just about three and a half inches in length. So far, the camera has captured just over a dozen anglerfish. A female anglerfish can grow up to the size of a baseball. Males are just parasites, ill-equipped for feeding, and have the sole responsibility to mate with a female. After mating, the male bites into the belly of the female anglerfish. He latches on until his body fuses with hers. Big fins are the distinctive flappy fins for which these squids of the Magna Pena genus are noted. This film of a vast fin squid was captured at a depth of one and a half kilometers. You won't find many animals as peculiar as this one down below. Their fins may be up to 90% of their total length, and they have exceptionally long arms, some of which are held at a right angle from the side of their body, giving the appearance of shoulders. In addition, the elbow-like bend in their appendages is intriguing. It helps their tentacles from tangling. Researchers have only been able to wonder about how these squids gather food. Is it by dragging their arms and tentacles down to the bottom of the ocean and trapping creatures? Further, they've mystified scientists because they have tiny suckers on their appendages and one long arm held above their body. Perhaps their filter diet has something to do with this stance. Which of these creepy crawlies do you think is the coolest? Let us know by leaving a comment below. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time, right here, only on Quest.